During the Pleistocene Age, much of the Earth's land was covered by short grass steppes, including Africa. Huge herds of prey were laid bare for a host of hunters. The fearsome saber-toothed Megantarian, with its enormous fangs, lay in ambush. Two species of hyenas tested the herds for signs of weakness. Dagger-toothed homotherium, pack-hunting saber-tooths, were rampant across the world, from Africa to the Americas. They were after something big, really big, like a young, straight-tusked elephant. For millions of years, the saber-tooths and hyenas had been the world's top land predators. But new forces threatened the old order, with skills the planet had never seen before. The big cats. Every species of saber-tooth vanished. Almost all the big cats survived. Why them? What's their story? Which unique adaptations gave the big cats the edge in this battle for survival? We go back in time to when lions were just beginning their ascent, to discover how they conquered the world, and how the tiger became the real king of the jungle. eight million years ago there was a newcomer on the scene a predator with completely different tactics to anything that had gone before a hunter that brought new abilities to a competitive world the lion its body was designed for power and acceleration with huge muscles on its haunches The main competition for lions at the time were the cat-like saber-tooths. Their power was front-loaded with massive neck muscles to drive formidable canines into prey. Megan Terrian was smaller than a male lion, but with those teeth was a dangerous adversary. Homotherium was the same size as a lion. Although its serrated fangs were shorter, it too was a force to be reckoned with. These extinct animals are commonly called cats. But they separated from the cats we know today millions of years ago and are actually quite different. In the Pleistocene, all three species shared these plains. But lions outlived the others, 
and went on to dominate the globe. For more clues as to what gave them the edge in this world of deadly predators, we can look at the behavior of modern lions. Lions are the most social of all cats. They can live in large prides of up to 35, including adult males, related females, and their cubs. Close physical contact strengthens bonds within the pride and makes them smell the same. Together they can share the rearing of cubs, kills and defense against predators. This teamwork was perhaps one ability that help lions survive alongside their prehistoric rivals, the social homotherium and hyenas. So how did the lion gain a competitive advantage? Lions today are almost completely nocturnal, as they most probably were in the past. And it's their night hunting which perhaps holds the key to their survival into the present day. At dusk, lion prides head out onto the plains, led by the most experienced females. With specialist filming techniques, we can see what's going on after dark. Infrared light and heat-sensitive cameras reveal rarely seen behavior. These lions may look as if they're out for a stroll, but they're hunting. Alert to every sound. Their knowledge of the terrain and highly tuned senses will be key in helping them pinpoint their prey. They'll need to catch something bigger than a gazelle to feed the whole pride. Not this big. When hippos are angry, they're very dangerous and could easily kill a lion. Wildebeest are what they're after. On dark nights, they huddle together for safety. They don't make a sound. The lions can't hear them, and they're too far away to see them. But they can smell them. Pride spreads out and encircles the herd. Two sisters team up. They're completely focused and in sync. They separate and flank the wildebeest who are completely unaware of their presence.
Without infrared light or heat-sensitive cameras, this lioness's countershaded body is extremely hard to see. From where the wildebeest are sitting, they have no chance of seeing her at all. To human eyes, only the stars would be visible. Lion eyes are eight times more sensitive than our own. This is dark. The kind of hunting lions are designed for. One lioness takes the wing. The other silently moves right into the middle of the herd. During the day on open plains, they'd never get this close. The winger gets the herd moving. The one in the center bides her time. From her low vantage point, she can see the animals clearly against the sky. Like most cats, lions have lots of very fast twitch muscles for short, sharp bursts of speed, but are low on endurance. Timing is critical. was a close call for the wildebeest. The lions will continue for as long as it takes. The matriarch lets the rest of the pride know it's time to regroup. This is how a big pride stays together in the dark. The roar can be heard over eight kilometers away. They wait and smell the air. They've located another herd. Again, one lioness creates panic in the herd. but they're completely unaware of her accomplice. She uses her strong canines and vice-like grip to administer a suffocating bite to the wildebeest's throat. By killing her prey silently, she's less likely to alert rival predators. Although one lioness brought down this 200 kilo wildebeest, it was a group effort. During the Pleistocene, team tactics would have been crucial for defense against saber tooths. Lions would have certainly come into conflict with the ferocious Megantarian.
This saber tooth, with its long teeth, could perhaps kill one lion, but not a pride. Taking on a pack of Homotherium would have been more of a challenge for lions. However, analysis of Homotherium's eyes and brain structure from fossil skulls suggests they were daytime hunters. Which is perhaps why lions chose the night for most of their hunting. Lions today, the night still offers no respite from another pack animal. The lion's ancient nemesis, the spotted hyena. They're aggravated. The lions have invaded their patch and chased the prey away. When the male lions aren't around, the hyenas Africa's second largest carnivore, intimidate the lionesses. <laughs> the adult females do their best to keep the intruders at bay. But there are enough hyenas here to overpower them. They'll kill cubs if they get the chance. In the Pleistocene, hyenas would have been a serious threat to lions, as they are now. It could be that both species needed to be social, just to deal with each other. One of the males turns up. His brother provides backup. Male lions won't hesitate to try and kill a hyena. And the hyenas know it. If it wasn't for teamwork, the cubs might be dead. Pride can now feed in peace. Lions can eat as much as 30 kilos a night. But even the king of the beasts is willing to share his meal. The pride is in high spirits. social nature and ability to hunt at night, the lion was able to find its own niche alongside prehistoric competitors. Its first step in becoming the master of the plains that we know today. But even a pride can be overpowered.
In times gone by, elephants would have lived in fear of homotherium and developed an enduring hatred for large cat-like animals. Once, there were several species of elephants roaming these plains, keeping the grasslands open. There's just one species left, a survivor of turbulent times. In the crucible of evolution that was the African plains of the past, the lion's next test was about to begin. There was another predator just emerging. Like the lion, it would change the history of the earth. And in the end, would challenge all big cats for supremacy. Homo erectus. The first species of human to hunt large prey. These early humans were implicated in wiping out at least three species of elephant in Africa and many other large mammals that were crucially also the prey of homotherium. In Africa, the age of the saber-tooths was coming to an end. Humans were replacing them. Yet lions managed to live alongside these early people, being wary and nocturnal may well have helped them avoid conflict. Around 1.7 million years ago, early human hunters expanded their range outside Africa into southern Europe and Asia. Almost a million years later, lions finally followed them crossing the Sahara during a green spell. Europe and Asia became the lion's new home from home, and soon they had spread from Spain all the way to Japan. Despite their near global domination, there were large parts of South and East Asia that were out of bounds for lions. Lions may have ruled the plains, but they were never the king of the jungle. That crown belongs to another cat. Wait for wait, it was as strong and powerful as a lion. While a pride could trounce it in the open, this solitary cat preferred to stay in cover in the forests and tall grasslands of Asia. This was the tiger. In the depths of the ice ages, the plains and frozen savannas were crowded with large mammals. Rhinos, mammoths, wizard, and aurochs 
potential prey of both lions and tigers, all had defensive horns and tusks. Once used against saber-tooths, were now needed against these two cats. With the saber-tooths gone, the lion and the tiger became Asia's top predators. One perfectly adapted to the open plains, and the other to forests and tall grasslands. Today, tigers are still found in these places, but here in the Russian Far East, prey is now scarce. The huge herds have gone, as has the lion. The tigers now have to wander vast distances in search of a meal. But when they see prey, they take no chances. The tiger is a master of stealth. Unlike the lion, it has more endurance muscle, which means it can last longer in a chase. When tigers catch something, they eat all of it, putting away a fifth of their body weight in 24 hours. This ability to cope with feast and famine is a trait that all cats share and would have given tigers a competitive edge in the prehistoric world. Today, the Russian Far East is at the edge of their modern range. But it's thought the tiger started life somewhere in China, and by 1.6 million years ago, it had spread south into a now submerged place called Sundaland, and onto the islands of Java and Sumatra. It went as far west as Turkey, and to the far east, all the way to Beringia and Japan. Asia was the tiger's heartland, and vast swathes of it were covered by tall grass savanna. There is a place at the edge of the Himalayas that closely resembles the tiger's prehistoric world. This landscape, known as the Tarai, is home to the densest population of tigers in the world. It's a land of giants. Herds of elephants still roam here. The world's second largest rhino. The world's largest buffalo. And heaviest wild cattle, all equipped to defend themselves against the largest living cat, if they can see it before it sees them. By looking at how modern tigers live here today, we can discover more about how they managed to survive the Pleistocene. Even though there are many here, you wouldn't know it. The highly secretive Bengal tiger is perfectly camouflaged. Out of 40 species of wildcat, the tiger is the only one with stripes. Perhaps a unique adaptation for living in these tall grasslands. Much of the wildlife here 
congregates around water. A place to drink. Feed. And cool down in the hot sun. The one-horned rhino's folded skin, over four centimeters thick, helps it to keep cool. It may have also evolved as a defense against saber-tooths. The crocodile has thick skin too. But instead, this cold-blooded predator basks on the banks to raise its body temperature. Cheeky, smooth-coated otters use their strength in numbers to pester this deadly reptile. Even the rhinos appear aggravated by the otter's antics. There's an air of nervousness when the top predator makes an appearance. Only a young bull elephant seems unfazed. Tigers also come here to drink and rest in the heat of the day. But they won't turn down the chance of a meal if something comes their way. An otter would make a tasty snack. These are much too wary. A mongoose shows less caution. Another tiger Possibly her sister is keen to share the meager remains. But there's clearly not enough for two of them. She'll have to make her own kill. Tall grasslands are hard places to live in. With so many dangerous animals and so little visibility, predator and prey have to be constantly vigilant. Tigers are able to travel around more easily by using paths that have been created by rhinos and elephants. From the air, you can see just how vast these networks of trails are. Being surrounded by a wall of grass 
makes navigation difficult. But researchers tracking the movements of tigers realize they must have a mental map of their environment. This adult female has a home range of about 25 square kilometers. She'll know every feature within it and regularly scent mark trees and bushes to let others know this is her domain. She's just one of the females that live within this dominant male's territory. The tigers in this part of the Terai live in high densities because of the abundance of prey. The fading light of dusk is a favorite time for tigers to hunt. These hefty gower, once the prey of saber-tooths, are now on the tiger's menu. At five times this male's weight, it's hard to imagine how a tiger could take one on. But of all the cats, the tiger has the strength and power to bring one down with minimal struggle. Something a lion would find hard to do single-handedly. This tall grassland habitat isn't a place a lion pride could live or hunt in either. But like the lion, it's possible the tiger became a night hunter to avoid competition from prehistoric predators like saber-tooths and early humans. Hunting at night is now the tiger's speciality. And with sophisticated night vision cameras, we're able to capture rare images of tigers that wouldn't normally be visible. This young female, around two and a half years old, is on the cusp of becoming independent. She's still living within the safety of her mother's territory and learning to perfect the skills of a hunter. She uses the well-worn animal trails to move quickly and silently. Rhinos can smell where she's been. light of a full moon, her biggest challenge is to avoid being spotted. The deer favor grazing in the open areas. From our high vantage point, we can easily see them. But from eye level, even the thinnest grass obscures almost everything. Any glimpse of a tiger and the deer call. She knows she has no chance here. She stands her best chance on a starry night. Without the light of the moon, she has the upper hand. Now, only infrared and thermal cameras allow us to see what happens. But the tiger will have to use all of her senses to gauge where the deer are. 
relying on her hearing to track prey down until she's close. Wherever the deer go, the tiger follows. Crocodile infested rivers are no barrier. In the pitch black, the tiger has scent, sound, and her mental map to guide her. These deer know this is tiger country and can never fully relax. She can't see far in the long grass, so has to rely on her hearing, the most acute of her senses. Her hearing is so sensitive that she can pick up the faintest echo of her own footsteps. It's possible she uses this information as a kind of echolocation to gauge the distance of the objects around her. Her ears rotate to pick up the slightest sound. It's crucial she stays silent too. One wrong move and her cover is blown. These rare images capture how the deer respond to the tiger's presence, barking warning calls loud and clear. The tiger retreats into the long grass. She's completely invisible now. And waits for the animals to settle down. Tiger can hear some deer nearby. This time, she won't go hungry. Tigers survived a series of extinctions during the Pleistocene that saw the demise of the saber-tooths and many other large animals. Perhaps simply 
because they learned to hide from early humans and hunted at night. At the height of their power, several hundreds of thousands of tigers would have roamed across Asia. But while the tiger was securing its place in eastern and southern Asia, lions were following the open plains northwards. Crossed the Bering Land Bridge. By 340,000 years ago, they were spreading from North to South America. In the Americas, the lion came face to face with some old enemies Homo Therium. Although this saber-tooth had long gone from Africa and Asia, it was still thriving here, and it lived alongside a monster saber-tooth, Smilodon. Twice the size of its extinct ancestor, Megantarian, and with even longer fangs. Perhaps competition with Smilodon is why the American lion became the biggest big cat ever, weighing up to 400 kilos. Incredibly, these three terrifying species managed to coexist for hundreds of thousands of years, sharing the bounty of prey on offer. Across the world, wherever the lion was surrounded by other powerful predators, it was its ability to hunt at night and strong social bonds that were key to its survival. Now, with the lion and tiger distributed across the globe, this really was the age of big cats. But their reign would not last forever. Around 60,000 years ago, a new force emerged out of Africa and swept the globe. Homo sapiens. By the time these cave paintings of lions were made in Ice Age France, modern humans were just establishing their supremacy in the frozen north. Whatever the primal thoughts behind these striking images, fear or even reverence, one thing seems certain. The lives of these two social predators have been interlinked for a very long time. Today, lions and tigers face an uncertain future in this human-dominated era. During the golden age of big cats, lions and tigers covered the globe. But this age has long gone. Now, there are less than 20,000 lions and fewer than 4,000 tigers. The last remaining populations are mainly confined to national parks and reserves. If we want to share a future with big cats, they need prey and space to roam. Areas like the Masai Mara and Serengeti are the lion's last strongholds. These rich green pastures, plump from the seasonal rains, have always attracted massive herds. During the rainy season, it's a time of plenty, 
a good start in life for the youngest members of the pride. They practice their hunting skills on anything that moves. Like all big cats, they'll need to rely on every skill they possess to survive in this changing world.